Hydraulic disc brakes, reliable, efficient, powerful, and consistent, just like me. They can also leak fluid from time to time, not like me. And they're found commonly on lots of modern new bikes. But how do they work? Is it some kind of wizardry? Well, in this video, we're gonna explain all. First, we're going to break it down and go through all the main components in the system. First, we've got the disc rotor. These are usually made from steel or aluminium, and fancier, higher spec ones can have a sandwich construction with steel on the outside. This is connected to the center of your wheel, and it's the surface that the brake pads make contact with in order to generate friction. This is the caliper, which contains the brake pads that when the lever is pulled, clamp on to the disc brake rotor surface. It usually has a two bolt connection onto the bike frame to make it very secure. This also means it can be adjusted so that the pads don't rub. The hoses or brake lines next, they're integrated into the frame on this bike, and these connect the calipers with the levers. They're filled with a braking fluid. And finally, this is the brake lever. And in the case of road bikes, it's often combined with your gear shifters too. Now that's out of the way, hydraulic disc brakes are called so simply because they're actuated by hydraulic fluid traveling from the lever through to the caliper. This differs from most rim brakes, which are actuated via a cable and cable actuated disc brakes, where there's a cable that runs through to the caliper. Now, in most cars, they're gonna have hydraulic disc brakes. Although some cars, more modern ones and Formula One cars, now have electronic brakes known as brake by wire. Although that's another story, you don't need to worry about that. And it's not found on road bikes yet. Taking a closer look at the lever, as we pull the lever, it pushes a small piston hidden inside the hood here, which then forces hydraulic fluid through the line and towards the caliper. In addition to the piston, the hood also contains a small reservoir of fluid, which is there to top up the system as your brake pads wear and they move in closer gradually towards the rotor. This is so that you always get consistent braking all the time, irrespective of how much your pads have worn down. If we look at this using a simple schematic diagram, this is the principle of how it works. You can see the fluid moving as we pull the brake lever and the piston forces it through the brake hose and down towards the caliper. The caliper works in a similar way to the brake lever, but in a reversed action and usually with two pistons. As the fluid enters the caliper, it is divided into two channels, one to the left and one to the right. As the fluid cannot be compressed, it forces the left and right pistons to move out of the caliper slightly. These in turn push the brake pads onto the disc rotor to generate friction and cause the wheel to slow down. DOT fluid must meet strict standards set out by the Department of Transportation, or DOT, hence the name. Most of these center around maintaining brake performance in a range of temperatures, specifically the minimum boiling point of that brake fluid, and manufacturers have to adhere to this. Mineral oil, on the other hand, is not governed by any safety standards, and so the exact makeup and composition of it can vary a lot. However, big brands like Shimano have invested huge amounts of time, money, and research into refining their mineral oil to make it, well, as good and as fit for purpose as possible. In fact, according to Shimano, we actually see this as a major advantage of using mineral oil because we don't have to trust anyone else's testing standards for the fluid they make. Since every Shimano brake uses Shimano brake fluid, we have complete control over the process and can assure consistent performance. Well, that's good to know. But what about bleeding the brakes, I hear you ask? Well, that should only be required every couple of years or so, and is often required because water is able to eventually permeate and enter the system through just moisture in the atmosphere. Once it does this, it interferes with the brake fluid and alters its boiling point. Dot fluid, as we have here in this SRAM brake, 
is hydroscopic, meaning it absorbs water. Whereas mineral oil is hydrophobic, meaning that the water that gets into the system will stay separate from the mineral oil. It's known as being immiscible. However, if there's any water in the system, it will cause problems. And this is because when you pull the brakes, it generates heat. The more you brake, the more heat. And water has a much lower boiling point than the mineral oil or dot fluid. And when water, well, heats up, it turns to steam. And this is gonna create little air bubbles inside your brake lines. The result is that, well, the brakes just are ineffective and they start to feel very spongy. Bleeding brakes is a process where you replace the entire hydraulic fluid in the system and put in some fresh stuff that's free from bubbles and water. And if you want to be able to do that job at home, well, why not check out the essential uh, road bike maintenance book? We have this available in the GCN shop, shop.globalcyclingnetwork. It'll tell you how to do this and many other common maintenance tasks on your bike. Although it's something that shouldn't, as I said, have to be done very often, maybe you know once a year or every couple of years, depending on how often you use your bike and the conditions that you ride in. And disc brakes as a system are very reliable. They should, uh, require very little maintenance. I know that's not always the case and people can have issues with them, but the most common thing that you'll have to do is replace your brake pads periodically as they wear down. But it's very easy to take them out and inspect them and see the wear. You see on my pads right now, there's still a good amount of life left in those, although I am gonna to have to replace them soon. Um, but that's a job that's very simple and easy to do. The key thing though is to try and make sure that your brake surfaces remain clean from oil grease and periodically clean them just to get rid of general dirt buildup as well as this will maintain much higher performance and keep them quieter crucially so that they're not screeching. I hope you found this video interesting and informative and you've learned something and if you have please give it a like and uh, subscribe and if you've got any questions about how disc brakes work or maintenance to do disc brakes fire them down in the comments section below and we'll do our best to answer them.